So the ALTA-2 trial was a unique randomized phase two effort uh, evaluating two separate doses of ergotinib, uh, a uh, standard dose of 90 milligrams daily and then a step-up dose where individuals started at 90 milligrams daily and escalated after one week in the absence of uh, intolerance to 180 milligrams uh, daily. Uh, this clinical trial and the setting of crizotinib resistance confirmed the activity of brigotinib. It's roughly a 45% uh, response rate in the lower dose group, about 55% in the higher dose group. Uh, PFS, progression-free survival, is just over nine months in the low dose group in the initial reports nearly 13 months in the uh, higher dose group. Some more recent reports suggest that it may be higher. Uh, one and two year survival rates that look quite promising that seem to be roughly uh, equivalent. And um, uh, intracranial disease control rates that were quite good uh, in the mid 80% range. So uh, the brain, the CNS, is a sanctuary site in ALK positive non-small cell. Within a year or two, the vast majority of these individuals will manifest CNS metastases. And brigatinib, like other uh, second, third generation ALK TKIs, seems to have tremendous penetrance into the CNS, such that we are seeing response rates in measurable tumors. That's um, untreated uh, CNS metastasis measuring at least a centimeter or more, uh, on the order of 50, 60 percent, particularly in this case at higher doses of brigatinib. Uh, with intracranial control rates that uh, uh, approach 75, 80 percent, so extremely promising. We are able in these individuals to put off brain radiation, uh, be it stereotactic uh, cyber knife or uh, more conventional whole brain radiation. Obviously, if someone presents with fulminant CNS involvement, highly symptomatic with a lot of vasogenic edema, you need to deal with that individual locally, either surgically or with radiation. But in uh, patients who have more indolent progression in the brain or relatively asymptomatic with minimal vasogenic edema, TKIs like brigatinib uh, uh, appear to work quite well. So brigatinib will um, likely join electinib and seritinib as uh, one of our standard second-line agents. For now, crizotinib still has uh, sole FDA approval in the front line. Uh, there may come a time based on the um, J. Alex and uh, global Alex trials that electinib will displace crizotinib. Nevertheless, for the huge uh, 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 cohort of patients who've already been on crizotinib uh, or been on crizotinib and then uh, chemotherapy, brigatinib will be one of our go-to agents. Uh, it, uh, in my personal experience, uh, it seems to be as well tolerated as electinib. I see a lot less muscle cramping, uh, much fewer myalgias uh, with brigatinib. Uh, both of these agents, brigatinib and electinib, are better tolerated than seritinib with far less GI toxicity, far less nausea, vomiting, and uh, diarrhea, which is really one of the bet noirs of uh, uh, seritinib. A uh, major concern with brigatinib is pulmonary toxicity. If we go back to the ALTA trial, the randomized phase two, the incidence of uh, uh, pulmonary syndrome, which is usually acute onset, shortness of breath, in some cases hypoxemia or uh, uh, wheezing, is about 6%. Only 3% total were uh, grade 3 or worse. All of this happened at the initial dose, not at the 180 milligram step up. So it does not seem to be a dose related uh, phenomena. And at least half these patients were able to be re challenged with the use of steroids and actually continue uh, brigatinib. So the question is, where does brigatinib fit? And it's very interesting that we already have two agents approved prior to brigatinib, i.e. crizotinib and electinib. And uh, crizotinib has had GI issues at full doses. I actually don't use full dose of uh, crizotinib in any patient anymore. Um, you have to adjust the dose uh, in vast majority of patients. Electinib is better tolerated, but it's four pills twice a day and brigatinib is once daily dosing, which is more convenient. So I think it clearly has a role uh, and an advantage in that regard. And there's also this rational dose escalation where you start at 90 milligrams for a week, and then you up it to the full dose of 180 milligrams, while the other drugs are not built like that. Uh, and brigatinib does carry the advantage um, of having better penetrance in the CNS compared to crizotinib from separate study of the trials, there's been no head-to-head -head comparison in CNS metastases, but from my reading, 
Brigatinib has better penetrance in the central nervous system and better response rate. Brigatinib, like uh, the other TKIs in this setting, covers uh, the broad uh, spectrum of ALK mutations, uh, acquired mutations, uh, with IC50s that uh, rival or exceed those seen with uh, either electinib and seritinib. So, uh, like both of those agents, uh, this is a clear-cut ALK inhibitor, unlike crizotinib, which is actually a very poor ALK inhibitor, uh, really started out in development as a MET inhibitor. So what I can start off by saying is that the treatment landscape of ALK-positive non-small cell lung cancer is changing uh, quite rapidly. And um, it's very clear where it fits in right now, but I think it's going to be somewhat more challenging as to what the role of the drug would be in six months from now or a year from now. Um, and so let me explain why I say that. At the present time, the data, uh, the drug has clearly shown efficacy in patients who were treated with crizotinib and then subsequently had disease progression. And in those patients, its efficacy is well established. Um, but I think in the near future, it is expected that crizotinib may not be the first ALK inhibitor used in patients with advanced ALK-positive non-small cell lung cancer, that there's a very good chance that drugs such as electinib or seritinib would be used as frontline therapy. And we are not, we don't have any data to know what the efficacy of brigatinib will be in patients who've previously treated with a drug like electinib or seritinib rather than crizotinib. Preclinical data suggests that brigatinib is one of the most uh, potent ALK inhibitors, and it appears to have activity against several ALK mutations that can be a cause of resistance to many of these frontline, or many of these next generation uh, ALK inhibitors. Uh, and that raises the possibility, at least based on preclinical data, that brigatinib may provide clinical benefit in patients who've been treated either with electinib or seritinib, but at this point, that's just a matter of speculation. Um, so it is quite possible that uh, practitioners might, uh, if electinib is approved as is expected, seritinib just got approved as frontline therapy for ALK positive non-small cell lung cancer, and it is expected that electinib in the uh, near future will also be uh, approved. Um, my suspicion is that practitioners may treat patients who've been treated with either electinib or seritinib in the front line with brigatinib in the second line, though we don't have clear data. What I can say is there are studies ongoing that are evaluating the efficacy of brigatinib in patients who've been previously treated with electinib. And